Catholic cover-up, which answers the question of why the sexual abuse crisis in the Buffalo Diocese is just coming to light now. Back in 2002, Bishop Henry Mansell and his number two man, Monsignor Robert Cunningham, had a golden opportunity to bear all of Buffalo's secrets when it comes to child abuse. Instead, as our I-Team Chief Investigator Charlie Speck tells us tonight, they kept much of the problem hidden from the public. Pope Francis gets candid about the Catholic Church in a brand new behind the scenes documentary. But it's his comment to a survivor of the sex abuse scandal that is really getting attention tonight. No matter what divides us, his words unite us. A sneak peek at the documentary, Pope Francis, a man of his word. The film follows the Pope as he shares his ideas about big issues, issues like immigration and social justice. Now, new revelations coming from the Pope. It all started by this guy, Juan Carlos Cruz. He was the main whistleblower in Chile's clerical sex abuse and cover-up scandal. Juan Carlos Cruz was abused as a child by Chile's most notorious pedophile priest. Cruz was then targeted for being gay after speaking out about the abuse. Cruz recently met with the Pope at the Vatican. Gay people, friends of mine, and gay people that I don't even know have been writing to me and said, did he really say that to you? And I said, yes. He said, well, that is changing my life. The news spreading like wildfire, and for many gay Catholics, a sense of relief. What the Pope said was just a validation of what a lot of us in the LGBT community has been struggling with. Eddie Martinez is the executive director for Latino Equality Alliance. He says this is a huge step forward for the church. The Vatican declined to confirm or deny these remarks. Yeah, the news comes just days after the release of the Pope's new film. It's a film about hope, and it's something that gay Catholics can now count on. Cardinal George Pell of Australia today became the highest Roman Catholic official to be charged with sexual abuse. The bishop's announcement came at the end of an emergency summit with Pope Francis. All 31 active bishops and three retired ones in Rome signed a document offering to step down. Pope Francis has said confronting the abuse scandal is vital for the church's credibility, but on Cardinal Pell, he's been largely silent. George Pell was, until recently, the Catholic Church's treasurer, arguably the third most important person at the Vatican. He will face a criminal trial, accused of historic sexual offences. Monsignor Anthony Figueredo, who has spoken with Pope Francis about the Pell case, told us having such a key figure on trial puts the whole church in the spotlight. Below the Pope, the Cardinals are next in rank, and certainly Cardinal Pell being such a senior figure is extremely serious in terms of the credibility of the Roman Catholic Church. The mass resignation marks the first time in history that an entire bishop's conference has offered to step down over a scandal. This is extraordinary news. All 34 of the bishops tendered their resignation. They made an announcement saying they were ready to resign after Pope Francis had summoned them to the Vatican for these talks behind closed doors, which took place over several days. Cardinal George Pell is a top advisor to Pope Francis, seen here in the conclave that elected the Pope, and he's the third highest ranking member of the Catholic Church. He's accused by multiple people of sex abuse charges that date back decades to when he was a priest in Australia. Well, David Lorenz, a director of a group called the Survivors Network of those abused by priests, doubts the new pope will bring much change to the Vatican. I will say that clearly the, the sexual abuse crisis during his in, in, in entire pontificate, we've heard uh, apologies, but what is the real action? We've had we, we know of many, many uh, bishops who have covered up these crimes. And not only they've covered it up, but they've tried to cover their tracks. He told, he required that all abuse cases go through him. So he's well aware of all of these abuse cases, and yet he's done nothing to stop it, or nothing to stop the bishops from covering it up. With the next pope, I, have, I don't have a lot of hope. Finally tonight, what happened five years ago today? Buonasera. It was five years ago today, Pope Francis chosen as the next pope. We remember that night, a limo waiting, but he instead chose the van, riding with the cardinals who had just named him pope. 
Tonight, in a new documentary, Pope Francis addressing questions of inequality, war, and peace. There are the more personal moments visiting the sick, visiting the forgotten, celebrating mass. And speaking directly to the camera, he urges everyone to learn to listen. Saber escuchar. Las diferencias nos dan miedo porque nos hacen crecer. The people's pope showing his humor when it comes to families, he says there are those disagreements. En las familias discutimos, en las familias a veces vuelan los platos. No voy a hablar de la suegra. Laughter when talking about the in-laws. It was that humor and that kindness we remember during our trip to the Vatican three years ago. But dozens of internal documents obtained from the Chancery exclusively by 7 Eyewitness News show that Head and other bishops knew about the pedophile priests, shuffled them from parish to parish, and showed little concern for the victims of the abuse. Seeing this stuff in writing for the first time, um, it's, it's, it's hard to read. Bishop Edward Head was Buffalo's second longest serving bishop, and during his tenure, the problem of sexual abuse by priests first started spilling out into the open. Happening tonight, the latest allegations against two priests from the Roman Catholic Diocese in Buffalo. Father White wasn't suspended. Instead, he was transferred to another parish. In the 1990s, Head downplayed the scope of the problem. Our incidence of, of it happening here is, is beyond, is below even the national lowest figures. So I thank God for that. In February 1993, the bishop relented, and Spielman got a second term at St. Peter and Paul. It would be five short months before another altar boy came forward with stories of abuse. This handful of priests were a cancer, and like Bishop Heads, must have referenced to Father Spielman uh, like a tooth decay, like a cancer that needs to be cut out, and they needed to cut it out, and they could have cut it out, but they didn't. Today, I break my silence of 50 years. The courage of victims has blown the lid off a scandal that's implicated 65 Catholic priests in Buffalo, which leaves many to wonder how the bishops managed to keep the abuse secret for so long. What the priests did was one thing, it was wrong, but the way they've handled it is 10 times worse. The Boston Globe's 2002 investigation was a spark that set off an inferno of abuse claims worldwide, forcing bishops like Buffalo's Henry Manziel to adopt a zero-tolerance approach to sexual abuse. In any incidents of child abuse, no matter when, no matter what has happened since then, the priest cannot serve in active ministry. In 2003, Manziel said he removed, quote, various priests, but neither he nor his number two man, Monsignor Robert Cunningham, would name the priests or say when and where the abuse took place. I believe that there is no need to reveal the names of people who 20 or 30 or 40 years ago, or who may be dead now, may have had an accusation against them. But internal church records obtained by 7 Eyewitness News indicate that at least nine other priests who are now accused of abuse were either left in parishes, hidden in unknown locations, or in the most egregious cases, quietly forced to retire. I distanced myself from the church when I became an adult. When I started talking about what had been taught, especially after all the scandals broke out in the Catholic Church, I realized that it doesn't represent my spirituality. There's another scandal with a girl who disappeared in the Vatican 20 years ago, and they say they may have found her remains. The Italian police are leading the investigation, but instead of helping them, the Vatican is obstructing the investigation. It's likely they knew about this and stayed silent. And on top of all those cases of pedophilia, this is just disgusting. The list of controversial events involving Catholic priests or Vatican officials reads like a tabloid. Report Reports of sex abuse, pedophilia accusations, alleged large-scale corruption and possible ties with the Mafia, while the media, especially in Italy, has been having a field day with the scandals, the Vatican either stayed silent or rebuffed all accusations. Today's service is not the only reason Pope Francis is making headlines. Last night, news outlets began reporting that the Pope denied the existence of hell. Pope Francis has made a bold statement. In an interview published by an Italian newspaper, the Pope said, quote, there is no hell, there is the disappearance of sinful souls. It stemmed from an article titled, is it in honor to be called, rather, it is in honor to be called a revolutionary. Pope Francis says there is no hell. What do you think? To me personally, I don't think it affects me too much. I'm a little more uh, 
agnostic or atheist. I think it's a bold statement that someone with so much power would say that. An Italian journalist claimed last week Pope Francis told him sinning souls disappear but hell doesn't exist. And that report set off a controversy in Italy and around the globe. Eugenio Scalforo is the editor of La Repubblica, a left-leaning national newspaper in Italy, and it actually is the one that the Pope reportedly has said he reads. It's the only Italian daily that he reads. Now, uh, Scalforo is known to be an atheist. He's 93 years old, and he doesn't record his interviews, but as a matter of fact, this wasn't an interview. It was a pre-Easter meeting, but the day after, what appeared in the newspapers was direct quotes of the Pope allegedly saying that um, hell doesn't exist, that evil souls, uh, they disappear, they don't go to hell. So many within the Vatican press corps are actually wondering how it is that the Pope continues to meet this controversial figure. I think in the end, as long as I'm a good person, I think that's enough for me. Michelle Lewicka says she isn't surprised by this statement from the Pope. I think that this Pope, just knowing what I know about him, is always trying to get Catholics in particular, but all people, to think deeper than these traditional religious ideas have sometimes allowed us to think. According to the story, the Pope said the souls of sinners simply vanished after death and were not subject to an eternity of punishment. Now this goes completely against centuries of core Christian beliefs. So what he's doing is trying to be more and more pastoral, and he's really reaching out to LGBT people. And even though this doesn't change the teaching, it changes the approach of the church. Well, for example, he uses the word gay, uh, which no, one, no pope has ever done before. Um, pope Francis making these comments to this gentleman. It is a big step, especially for LGBT people who have felt marginalized for so long, to have someone say, I understand you, I understand that you don't choose your condition, uh, and I welcome you is a big deal. Well, we have no confirmation for the statement from the church itself, but could you imagine Pope Francis saying such a statement? Yeah, absolutely. Since the beginning of his pontiff, uh, we could say that Pope Francis's line has been, who am I to judge? This is something that he uttered in 2013, and the, the debate is still whether this will overturn teachings in the Catholic Church. Um, officially, it has not done so, um, but I think that it, it is going to leave a a very important pastoral impact in the lives, in the life of the church. I think Pope Francis is, is actually giving us a new spin on an old natural law teaching, um, but he has not uh, departed from the, the teachings of the church. What would it take for him to depart? I mean, would it take the Vatican or somebody challenging him saying, look, you have now said this to somebody who identified as gay, shouldn't you follow this up with some sort of action? So what do you think?